Welcome back. This video is going to be about futures prop shops. Uh, a lot of retail traders hold these in, these um, firms in high regard. They think that they they are the, the sort of the pinnacle of where they would want to be. I'm going to explain why that's no longer the case. What's interesting, and again, this links to a, a Substack newsletter that I published. Uh, and what's interesting is within a very short time of me publishing it, I already had a few comments from people with experience of this negative experience of these firms as well. So check out the comments if you have experience. Comment below here on YouTube or comment in the, on, on the Substack article. So let's have a look at the history of these futures prop rooms. They grew up when the floors um, ceased trading. Uh, initially, um, because this, you know, the floors went down in London, for example, before internet trading, uh, some rooms opened up to, for ex-floor traders. From there, the model kind of developed and some of the ex-floor traders opened up uh, their own rooms uh, and basically backed, provided backing and education to traders. The education was provided by ex-floor traders was almost always a market maker style, whether it was order flow trading or spread trading on futures. So that would usually be along the bond curve. So twos, fives, fives, tens, or along the short end of the curve as well. Almost all of the traders in these rooms in the early days were trading those styles. And as always, the better traders were kept, the, other, the, the losing traders were, were let go. There was quite a rigorous training program would last several weeks, um, as I say, led by ex-floor traders. What happened was as these rooms started to grow and get you know more and more traders in them, dozens of traders, the firms started to realize that they were the, some of the biggest uh, trading firms now uh, on the exchanges. They negotiated uh, substantial rebates and discounts with the exchanges. And that led them to change their model. They, what they realized was in, in the early parts of the model, the trading desks were profitable um, and you know, they were also making money from the difference in fees between what they were being charged by the exchange or their clearer and what they were charging the traders. What they now realized was that the trading desk could operate flat p &L. It didn't matter if the trading desk made money anymore because the amount of money they were making from what we would call fee arbitrage, i.e. the money that the difference between what they're paying for uh, commissions and what they're charging the traders was becoming substantial as they grew more and more traders. So their model changed. As that model changed, there was no longer a need to educate the traders anymore. So a lot of the old floor traders were let go. Um, and essentially, and I've spoken to people that have gone into these rooms, the trading that they received was, was minimal. It was literally, these are what futures are. This is what a DOM looks like. Go and figure it out. That was literally how many of these prop rooms were, were um, educating traders now. So the education programs dropped. And now you've got traders trading in a whole variety of manners. So no longer it's all everybody trading a professional market maker or spread trading style. It's just a whole, you know, the whole gamut of ideas. And then now all the retail environment starts coming in, like, you know, market profile and these types of things. From the, from the um, prop firm's perspective, as long as the desk is flat p &L, it's fine for them. The fee arbitrage is significant money. Remember too, they're always letting the weaker traders go, the losing traders, so they're keeping the better ones. They also run very tight limits. So, you know, once a trader starts to lose during the day, they will be, you know, basically kicked out of trading that day. If they have too many bad days, they'll be kicked out. So it's with very tight risk management, it is very possible to keep this PL flat, you know, roughly flat on a day, some traders winning, some losing, and the same the next day. Fee arbitrage is the game. They opened up offices elsewhere. They could, by, by not having to educate people anymore, not running these multi-week training programs to teach people these more complicated but more professional market-making styles, now they could bring dozens of traders in. You know, the very basic information could be taught just in a couple of days and just let them go. It really does become a numbers game. You can bring hundreds of traders through. You're going to get some winners anyway, right? In a, if you trade three, four, five hundred traders, you train them in a year, you're going to get some successes. For you as individuals out there, you're going to hear about those successes. You're obviously not going to see the huge numbers of failures and the failure rate is very high. They churn through a lot. I've spoken to people, as I say, involved in these rooms. There have been cohorts of 10, 20, 30 at a time where, you know, one or two months later, none are left. Literally zero out of sometimes 30 traders are left within a couple of months. That's how high the failure rate is. 
you can see those of them that have an outward viewing um, side to their business. So they might be running some trading courses or they're, you know, they're out there in the social media. You'll see by the styles of trading they teach whether or not they really are a professional style firm. If they're suggesting you know, trading macro type things or they're suggesting you know, market profile or typical retail trader things, then they've moved away from what they should be. And that, unfortunately, is many of them. So it's really important to understand what the model is. The model is basically fee arbitrage from any of these. They don't care whether the traders make money. And, 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 and think about it from your perspective as a trader. Um, from, the, from the firm's perspective, we have very different um, goals. The firm wants the, the desk to be flat P&L every day. Trader A might be profitable today. Trader B might be profitable tomorrow. For us, we need to be profitable, you know, every week or every month or, you know, to, to be profitable. The firm doesn't care about that. They don't care if we're profitable today and someone else is profitable tomorrow and we lose tomorrow. As long as the desk is flat, it has completely different goals and ambitions that we have as traders. So if you're looking up to prop shops and you think, yeah, this is a way I'm going to get of making money or of learning about this business, be very careful. Initially, in the old days, they produced some very good traders. They traded in a professional style. Now, many, if not most of them, are moved away from that to a fee arbitrage numbers game style. Um, their, it, the education they provide is either basic or just basically a retail style education. It doesn't matter to them. They're always going to get in a numbers game. If you train hundreds of traders, you're always going to get some winners. And as long as you've got lots of people trading, fee arbitrage is the game. The, the, and actually, the, the difference between what they're paying and what they're charging on commissions has actually probably grown over the years as well. That's the game. So understand what the game they're playing, understand the weaknesses and why perhaps futures prop shops are not shouldn't be held in the, in the high regard that many people do and be, understand the fact that they're playing a very different game than we need to play.